Okay, so we're going to start from the top down um, as far as the handle goes. Now, this handle came, it was at least an inch and a half wide, if not more, at almost two inches. Um, now, it doesn't look like I've taken much material off, um, and that's for good reason. I mean, I have removed quite a bit of material. I at least wanted it to be at its thickest part as wide as the cheeks of the axe up here, the shoulder. So I'll uh, basically give you a rundown of what I did. So I have, these are, this is the tool I use most, which is a uh, old Nicholson rasp. Uh, I recommend finding an old rasp like this if you can. They're very aggressive. It's got one round side and a flat, so you can get in and uh, carve out curves into your handle. <clears throat> now, there is a, there's a rasp out there that has become pretty popular, which is the Shinto rasp, and it's basically just a bunch of um, hacksaw blades mushed together, but um, from what I hear, it's an extremely aggressive rasp, and that's that's what you want with a rasp. You want it to remove as much material as, as you can with it uh, as fast as possible. And controlled. I would say control is good too. Um, I was going to use this flap disc over here to shape this handle, but I pushed out and I'm doing it like I usually do, which is kind of just dip my feet in and then kind of go from there. So obviously I took quite a bit off the shoulder and then moved over to this, this uh, area where I can fit my hand. I'm not 100% happy where this is right now. I might make this a bit sharper right here um, just so it, it feels more ergonomic. But what I have done is I've not taken any wood from the front of the axe whatsoever, and that's that's something that you should pay attention to whenever you're hanging an axe or shaping a handle, is work from the back forward. Um, it's okay to take from the back as long as you have a plan for it. Now, I'm basically making like a wedge with this, uh, and in more of an oval shape, oblong. So forward taper, lots of thinning through here. I basically just rasp flat all the way down to here. And my buddy Owen, Elemental Force, um, he's got one of these too. And I noticed that he makes like a, a swell right here above the actual palm swell and uh, I can see that being useful for a couple reasons um, if you want to grab up higher on the axe you've kind of got a little area to grip and then down here it, it just makes it more suited for your hand it just feels more comfortable you can see that I've not taken any material off the back right here it's just kind of give it more curve right here um, these handles have a ton of potential, even though they're thick as baseball bats when you get them. But as you can see, it turns out really well. From the top down, I was rasping flat, 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 and then just gradually tapering that forward. And then I stopped here and switched to the other side to get more of a curve. And that's how I got this fatter section right here and then obviously once you get down in here you can start using that rounded side and uh, scoop out the areas you feel like give you more purchase on the axe um, I do need to make this a little sharper right here but that'll come in time um, I don't like to take off too much material at first because 
I mean, it ju it's just a handle, but at the same time, it's a pain in the ass to have to hang it over again because you thinned it too much. So just go slow and, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't feel bad about having a thick handle. I mean, it's really just hurting you in the end, but, <laughs> you know, you'll get there. So, I mean, this is one of the better handles that I've shaped. Um, Oxenkopf has really excellent steel, and from what I can tell, their handle wood is, is fairly good too. I mean, it's, it's American Hickory, but, um, one, one difference I did see, uh, was that this, this Hickory is a little bit more pithy than the, uh, meaning like just lighter and not as hard as some of the hickory that we have here in the States. Um, and I, I attribute that to not being soaked in linseed oil because you do have a coat of lacquer over this and obviously paint down here that's keeping it dry, sealing in the oils of the wood. There's no, there's no oil to speak of. This is basically just bare wood underneath so all right so right here you can mess this up pretty easily if you get if you get it out of control but uh, like I said I still need to scoop this out a bit more to get that nice hook right there to for my pinky to go into um, I'm just like I said, I'm just easing into that. And you basically just want to do the same thing on all sides of this. So it's kind of got that like fishtail pattern going on. And uh, Owen was, whenever he was telling me how he does this, uh, he, he mentioned that you stop about a quarter inch from the actual edge of the handle. And I think that that can vary, I mean, you know, this is all subjective, but where it sits now, it's actually extremely comfortable. It looks really nice. You can see more of those subtle curves in there. In certain light. Really happy with how it turned out, and I haven't mentioned yet that the grain on this handle is damn near perfect. I mean, you cannot ask for much better than that. There were two knots, but they're just going to sand away or scrape away, which is what I'm about to do here in a second, because I do want to thin out just a bit in this area, just so I have a little bit of flex. So anyway, I'm going to set you guys back up there, and I'll get at it. Um, hopefully, that gave you a better understanding of how to do this. It's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, carving is easy. You basically just carve out the parts that you don't want there, and you have the shape that you need. So it doesn't really get much easier than that. So for a scraper, if you've watched my previous videos, I usually use a pair of scissors. Uh, you basically just file this flat on top and then file the sides flat so you have kind of like, like ears pointing up. And then you take a screwdriver or a harder steel and you just uh, burnish that and that flips the burr over and gives you that nice hook that you need. So, so scrapers are really helpful uh, if you have any tear out in the grain because you can just smooth all that out. Uh, you can see down here, the shavings are fine. Now, if you have something like a card scraper, 
it's it's going to be way more effective and cover a larger surface area. Um, I'm just using what what I have, so it is what it is. Basically, just concentrating in the areas that I feel need to be thinner. I'm thinking I can really push this handle if I want to. What's also nice about scraping is the fact that you're not removing all that much material. Once you've got a shape that's established, you're not really going to deviate from that all that much. And uh, it's easy to concentrate in the areas that you want to remove a bit of wood from. Now I'm just going to eyeball it as I go. Also what's nice about having scissors is that you can get in these hard to reach places up here. I'm sure you could do it with a card scraper but it'd be a little bit more difficult. Use the tip. Now, especially if you're using a rasp, um, scraping is going to help get rid of those tool marks a lot quicker than sandpaper. Let's give you guys a look at how this is looking from the top. This is a piece of fire hose. It's nice to have if you don't have any soft jaws. Okay, so I'm going to start focusing in this area here. I already know, you know, after creating this shape, where I need to remove material from, so it's pretty self explanatory. Just gonna deepen some areas that I've put curves into. I'm doing this so I can get a really firm purchase on the handle whenever I'm limbing or chopping. Uh, whenever you scoop out this area here, it kind of works as like a lock. When your hand runs down, it just stops instead of spreading your hand out. Give you guys a shot of the side here. Trying to make that hook more pronounced. There's like a little bump right in here. See that it's it's flaring out nice and even. It's looking really good. And it feels even better. So thank you, Owen, for uh pointing me in the right direction, not only on this axe, but my handle shaping skills. So, hell yeah, dude. That's more like it right there. Okay, so here's the final product as far as the handle goes. I'm really, really happy with this. Look at that. Like a French curve almost. Beautiful.